Hey guys, it's Bub here. Microsoft released Windows 10 to the public on July 29th, 2015, and this was the first build of Windows 10 that they released. This video is being uploaded on July 28th, 2025, one day before Windows 10's 10 year anniversary. So in this video, we'll be going all the way back to July 29th, 2015 to Windows 10 build 10240, which was the threshold one build of Windows 10 that so many Windows 7 and 8.1 users got the free upgrade to on that July day. So with that being said, let's go ahead and power on this virtual machine and take a look at Windows 10 10 years later. For those of you who may not remember, at the time, Microsoft was really pushing Windows 10 as the last version of Windows ever because their plan was to continue updating Windows 10 until eventually, you know, it just would be a, a continuous, ever-evolving operating system. Obviously, that never happened because Windows 11 came out. It was nice to see their original concept for what they wanted Windows 10 to be. This is also the time where Microsoft was trying Continuum, which was a continuous experience between Windows Phone and Windows. Obviously, Windows Phone died, so that never became a true reality. But here we go. Setup has surprisingly not changed that much in the past 10 years. So let's let this build of Windows install and then we'll be back to take a look at what Windows 10 was like 10 years ago. All right, and here we are. This is the first screen in the Windows 10 10 240 out of box experience where we're basically gonna pick the express settings. And just like that, it said it was gonna reboot, but I'm not actually sure. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done an out of box experience on a version this old. But even more so, many people actually never saw the out-of-box experience in Windows 10 Build 10 240 because they upgraded from Windows 7 or Windows 8.1. When you think about the upgrade process from an older version of Windows, this is the first time that Microsoft had ever offered a free upgrade, especially one that came down in a KB update that put itself in your system tray that you had to subscribe to. So that was pretty interesting. So here it's telling us we can connect Windows to our organization in one of two ways. So this must be a version of Enterprise. I'm not entirely sure what I downloaded. Um, but we're going to go ahead and pick Join uh, Active Directory Domain. And then we're just going to go ahead and pick Windows. But what I'm curious about first is did that say Entra ID? Yes. That says Join Microsoft Entra ID. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that says Entra, because this is 10240, back when it was still Azure AD, not Entra ID, but I digress, that's a little weird. Maybe it pulls from the internet. So we're just going to go ahead and name this Windows, continue through the setup. Look how easy it was to get around the Windows Microsoft account requirement. We're going to go through this process, and then I'll be back once we're on the desktop with VMware Tools installed. All right, and here we are on the desktop. The first thing that really jumps out to me here is this background. Now, you may or may not know this. I mean, it's a pretty well-known Windows 10 fact. This wallpaper is actually real. It's not a, you know, kind of fake image. This is a real image that was taken with a camera. I can't recall exactly how they did it, but they took this image with a camera. It's not Photoshopped or anything like that, which is crazy to me because, I mean, it just looks so cool. I really wish Microsoft was able to kind of keep some version of this rather than make what they ended up doing, but I digress. Down here we have our taskbar. Now again, at this time there's really no transparency as we usually think about it. It was just pretty much a solid black bar with you know, a little bit, you can see through a little bit, but nothing like what we're thinking of today. I'm thinking more so of glass over transparency. Over here on the right side we have our show desktop button, hasn't changed. We have our calendar. Again, even the fonts just look so different. We have our action center, which at this time was to the left of the clock, not to the right. We then have our volume, our network connection, which opens up in this really big pane for some reason, and it has this really ugly font. I don't like that. Uh, we then have our remove hardware, Bluetooth, well, OneDrive was there, and then VMware tools. Over here on the left side, we have our Microsoft Store, which is not working because I'm sure this version is, again, 10 years out of date. Just notice how quickly that opened. The one thing I'm noticing is that this build of Windows 10 is really fast compared to some modern versions. We then have the File Explorer that we'll take a look at in just a minute. And then we have the original Microsoft Edge. Um, again, this was Microsoft's first time that they ever debuted Microsoft Edge. Um, and there were a ton of cool features. Like I remember kind of geeking out over this back when it first came out because you were able to draw 
on web pages, highlight on web pages, erase, leave comments. I mean, that was kind of the big selling point of Microsoft Edge was that you could do all of these things right out of the box and you couldn't do much else. <laughs> I mean, it was it's a very bare bones browser and we should be very thankful that Microsoft decided to use Chromium for future builds because this is really bad. We then have our, what is this even called, Task View, um, which did have multi-desktop support even back then. This was the first version of Windows to have multi-desktop support. Big thing, especially I remember people would be like, oh, Mac OS can support multi-desktop, but Windows can't. We then have Search the Web in Windows, which when we click on it, it brings up Cortana. Yes, Cortana is in this build. Um, the amazing assistant that kind of sucks, that we just opted out of. Uh, we can't connect to web search, but you can still search your stuff, make sure you're on the internet. We are, again, these servers are probably long shut down. So we'll go back to the search and then we'll type settings here. And when we open settings, I'm actually surprised that worked. I remember this search being really bad. We can see all of these, this very interesting settings pane. Um, it's like nine tiles in a, a big window. I really don't like it. It looks very old, very like not very enhanced. Um, I really like the one in Windows 11 a lot better, but it is still a big improvement from Windows 8.1. Going to about, we can see that we do have Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation. Um, nothing else. It doesn't really tell us that much else here. It does say join Azure AD right there though. So it, for some reason, the setup screen said Entra. I'm still a little confused about that. Going into the start menu, we can see that this is the original start menu. We have life at a glance, which is kind of like your calendar, mail, edge, photos, blah, 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 blah. Then we have play and explore, which I find interesting that play and explore comes on Windows 10 Enterprise, but I digress. We have Xbox, music, movies, and TV. News, which I'm surprised news is actually still getting, like, news. <laughs> This was a big improvement from the Windows 8.1 start menu because it is obviously the combination of both worlds. It's Windows 8 and Windows 7 put together. This was a big deal back when it came out because it was really Microsoft admitting that they really screwed up and that this was the future. Down here or on this side, we have our most used apps, which there's some default ones there. We then have the file explorer settings, power settings, which look at how ugly these buttons are. I mean, this OS really was just unpolished at the time. Then we have all apps. Never 3D Builder, I haven't heard that name in a while. Um, we'll scroll down here, we won't go through everything. Solitaire Collection, OneDrive, OneNote, Settings, Sports, Store, and then Xbox, and then our usual kind of, you know, whatever you want to consider these accessories that you would get. Um, the Xbox app just opens and crashes, probably because it either needs an update and can't do it, or it needs to do something. I'm not entirely sure what. But let's go back and take a look at that file explorer here. We can see that compared to even modern versions of Windows 10, it looks the exact same. I mean, file explorer in Windows 10 looks almost identical. Again, very similar to Windows 11, except Windows 11, instead of having the ribbon, it has the whatever you want to call it at the top, the tabs, um, as well as a completely redesigned ribbon. Um, but nothing too crazy here. We can see that this local disk is using 10.1 gigs, which for Windows 10 isn't actually that bad. Going into performance, we can see that we're using typical CPU usage and 1.3 out of 8 gigs of RAM. At this time, Windows 8.1 was the most lightweight version of Windows ever, in my opinion. And this really piggybacked off of that. This is a very lightweight version of Windows that just appears to work. Some other notable features about this, it brought four corner snapping. Previously, you could only go top, left, or right. In Windows 10, you could go all four corners, which was a big deal back in the day. I remember I remember freaking out about some of these features that now seem like second nature to us. So that being said, this is a brief overview of Windows 10, 10 years later. Definitely let me know what you think down in the comments below. And are you still using Windows 10? If you are, you need to get off of it because it ends support in October of this year. If you like this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as we do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. If you have any video ideas, please drop them in the comments below because I love doing viewer recommended videos. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.